What is evolution? Is it a fact? Is it a theory? Or could it be both? Let's begin with a very simple definition of evolution. Basically, species change over time. Now you can imagine a scenario where you've got a green looking katydid, but over time that katydid evolves to look more and more like a leaf until finally you get to a modern day katydid that has evolved to look like a leaf so they can avoid being eaten by a bird. And then over time, as life evolves, it also diversifies into many different types of species. Some of these species are remarkable in how well they resemble a leaf, like this one. You can see that there's actually veins in the leaf, it even looks like it's old and decaying, and the back end of it even looks like it's been chewed upon. The evolution of modern whales actually dates back tens of millions of years ago, going back to almost 50 million years ago with a small mammal called Anohydrus. That later evolved to Ambulocetus as it started to move into the water. Ambulocetus slowly changed into Rhodocetus as it became more and more aquatic. Finally, we got Protocetus around 40 million years ago. And as you can see, Duridon 35 million years ago was looking more and more whale-like. And then by about 25 million years ago, whales split into two major groups. The toothed whales, like porpoises and dolphins, and the baleen whales, like great blue whales and humpback whales. And today, after 50 million years of evolution, we have 88 species of whales and dolphins. They're either the toothed whales, which means they actually have teeth like an orca, or they have baleen like a humpback or a blue whale. So now we've seen a couple examples, and we know that evolution is where species change over time. However, is this a fact or is it a theory? A fact is something that we can observe, measure, or test for. For example, we know that the sun will set in the west. It will also rise in the east. This is a fact. It's indisputable. And the reason why is because the earth is round and is rotating on its axis about once every 24 hours. That's why the sun rises in the east and will set in the west. So based on our definition of a fact, we also know that evolution is a fact as well. That's because species change over time. It's something that we can observe, measure, and test for. So if I just said evolution is a fact, then why do most people refer to evolution as a theory? Well, a theory is a broad set of explanations to explain how things work. And theories are well supported by both experiments and observations. So a theory of evolution or evolutionary theory would explain why species change over time. Charles Darwin is most commonly credited with developing a theory of evolution. It began in 1831 when he set sail on the HMS Beagle to survey the coast of South America. It was originally going to take about three years, but the trip ended up taking over five years. And of course, the HMS Beagle was not the only popular five-year journey. After spending several years in South America, the Beagle went into the Pacific and specifically went to the Galapagos Islands a few hundred miles off of Ecuador. When Darwin arrived at the Galapagos Islands, he realized there were a lot of unique species there. And in fact, he realized there were unique species on all oceanic islands. But he made one key observation. He realized that a lot of the animals on the Galapagos Islands were very similar to the ones on the mainland. So they both had finches, they both had tortoises, they both had iguanas, and they both had cormorants. But the key observation he made was that the species on the islands were slightly different than the species on the mainland. One of the most famous residents on the Galapagos Islands are the Darwin finches. Darwin made many collections of these birds while he was there. Years after he got back to England, he was going through the specimens and he realized how different all their beaks were. And that got him to thinking, why were there so many different types of finches on the island? He began to realize that an ancestor finch may have gotten to the island millions of years ago and over time it slowly changed or transmuted or evolved into other types of finches specifically other species of finches. Darwin spent over two decades accumulating more evidence for a theory of evolution. Finally, in 1859, he published his seminal work on the origin of species where he laid out his theory of evolution by natural selection. From his time on the Beagle and the decades afterwards, Darwin made several key observations. One of those was 
that there's variation within a population. As you can see by these crown anoles, they're called Anolus cuvieri, they're from Puerto Rico, that there's a lot of variation within this population. Each one of these is slightly different from the other one. Darwin also noted that there are more individuals born in a population every generation that can possibly survive. And not everyone survives. And you realize that death and survival are not random. In nature, it's the fastest cheetah that wins. Or it could be the katydid that most resembles a leaf and avoids predation. It's these organisms that are most likely to survive and pass on their genes to the next generation. So over time, species evolve as they accumulate changes. Evolution by natural selection is also really important for one major reason. It predicts descent with modification. Let me explain what I mean by this. Let's start by taking a look at some common animals like this pupfish, or this salamander, or this anole from Ecuador, or even this squirrel from back east. And the question is, what do all of these animals have in common? Well, they have several things in common. First, they all have calcified bone. They have a backbone. They have a rib cage. They also have a muscular postanal tail. And they also have paired appendages. The reason why is because they inherited them from a common ancestor. If you look at the salamander, the lizard, and the squirrel, they also have paired limbs as well. In fact, they're called tetrapods, which means four limbed. The reason why is if you go all the way back to 380 million years ago to our lobed fin fish, it had paired fins with a bone structure that was very similar to modern day tetrapods. Well, that evolved into something like tiktaalik, which became the first amphibians about 370 million years ago. And then around 312 million years ago, amphibians split into two major groups. One would become the mammals, and one would become the modern reptiles. Because we evolved from that distant lobed fin fish over 380 million years ago, we've maintained certain characteristics like those four limbs. However, over time, we've diversified into over 30,000 different species from reptiles and birds and mammals and different types of amphibians. So why do biologists care so much about evolution? Well, it turns out that evolution is a central paradigm to biology. So what is a paradigm? Well, that's a standard set of ideas theories, or way of thinking of something that unites our entire field. Evolutionary theory explains the unity and diversity of life. That's why we have fish, and geckos, and colorful looking crabs, and butterflies, or strange looking corals that look like creatures from another world, or just as bizarre, this bay scallop with a close-up of his beautiful blue eyes. And with all of that diversity in life, there is still unity because we all share common ancestry. Nowhere is the unity of life more evident than the forearms of a human, a cat, a bird, and a whale, represented by these four limbs here. Of course, the human is on the left and the whale is on the right, but as you can see, we have the exact same bones. One bone, two bone, a lot of bones. We all have a humerus, a radius, an ulna, carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. Why? Because we inherited them from a common ancestor. Because all animals shared a common ancestor dating back about 550 million years, we can study worms and flies and mice to understand our own growth and development and how our own genes work. Going back over 3.5 billion years, we actually share all the same genes. That allows us to make GMOs. GMOs are genetically modified organisms where we have directly manipulated the genes of one organism. In the case of these glowfish, we've actually inserted the genes from corals and other jellyfish into them to give them those bright colors. We can also insert human genes into bacteria and turn those genes on, and bacteria can make things for us like human insulin so we can treat diabetes. We can also make other forms of medicine, including ones to cure cancer by making GMOs. We can also improve our crops to improve their yield, make them last longer in the store or to make them more drought resistant, or herbicide resistant, or pest resistant. And in some cases, we can even improve their nutrition. And lastly, why should you care? Well, first of all, it's going to make studying a lot easier for you. So whenever we study cells and their structure, you're only going to have to learn one basic type. The reason why is, well, you guessed it. 
All animal cells evolve from a single common ancestor, and they maintain lots of characters in common. And evolution is still very important today. Even with our modern medicine, we have all these different types of antibiotics. But over time, all the bacteria and other types of pathogens, well, they've been evolving. And they've been evolving resistance to our new antibiotics. So as a result, we have to keep coming up with new medicines to treat diseases that were once easy. And there you have it. Evolution can be either a fact or a theory. If it's a fact, we're talking about species changing over time. The theory, that explains why species change over time, and we say that's natural selection. And lastly, evolution is the central paradigm of biology because it explains both the unity and diversity of life.